But a fat, yeah, I like that Sleep all day, just a cat nap But a cup and a Hershey Tin bun. This is like a bun with red bean paste. I'm gonna eat this first and then mandu, which is dumplings. This is actually pretty sweet, but the bun, it's super chewy. Very good. <laughs> I already started, as you guys can tell. I'll be right back. Yeah. Daddy so wants to fly back. But a price be the ice pack. Will I ever grow to the guy that I think of? I'm gonna get the slow as the sky that I dream of. So this is the mandu. It's the kimchi one that I got. Whoa, kimchi. I fuck with chocolate, girls topless. Maybe too much, can't stop it. Still rocking rocket ships, yeah, fossils and bones. More focus on them hips than my lungs. Just thinking, two stories, got a place of my own. Silly kid, you can run when you grown. It's like that, huh? After a three hour drive, which should have been an hour, we're finally here. There were like tons of traffic because it's like Hangulnar, which is like a Korean holiday. And I guess people just wanted to go on vacation. That shit took like three hours. Holy shit, I need to pee. It's fine. Mm. It's fine. Okay. Okay. The certain traps I can't escape. You set them down and walked away. So now I'm here alone, just waiting, hoping that you'll come and save me. But I think I gotta fix this by myself. I don't need a mix in someone else I can't even think under your spell Could be getting by with just your smell Now there's nothing left inside my brain Lit it up and sent it down in flames Now I'm barely getting through my days Maybe I'll forget you on the way It's been a while since I've sat in this corner to like chat with you guys so this is kind of weird but yeah so as you guys saw I went to eat lunch with my parents and then we had some coffee and then came back it was very short just because we realized this was like the worst day to go out because the traffic was unbelievable like it was literally three hours to the place and then hour back which wasn't bad it's normally like an hour away but I don't know why it was just actually i do know why um but the traffic was crazy on our way there um to namyangju like i've mentioned that place before in my last vlog and the reason why our family decided to go to namyangju for lunch was because it's my parents anniversary they've been married for 27 years and it's insane i cannot believe they've been together for that long but it got me thinking of them as parents and I guess it just made me realize that I'm so grateful to have parents like them and I'm glad they got married and had me. I've come a long way to get to this point. There has been a stage in my life where I blamed a lot of the problems that I have on my parents because I was entitled and spoiled and I think I still am. Not proud to admit it but I know that that's one of my flaws and that's something that I want to change and I want to fix but I I do think it's true that I'm entitled and I just like kind of threw that out there uh, without like building up to it that's just how I tell my stories I'm not a great storyteller but when I was a teenager and even when I was like an adult I still had a lot of like this pent up anger or something and pent up I don't know some kind of negative feelings and um, I kind of pointed that towards my parents because I didn't know who else to blame when in fact not much about blaming whose fault it is for making me feel that way it was more so that I should have learned to take accountability for my feelings and you know at a certain point like you can't like keep blaming others for making you feel like shit and I realize that now but yeah before I got to that conclusion I did a lot 
of like blaming my parents you know the typical teenagers that are like oh my god like i hate you mom i hate you dad why won't you listen to me like you don't get it like that was me and that lasted a while and i <laughs> it wasn't oh my god like i'm gonna run away from home to that extent but i had my fair share of like teenage years um the typical teenage years and like slowly but surely i'm beginning to like humanize my parents and i thought i did that before too i thought that i grew into this person that could view them as like just individuals who aren't you know just parents but like for who they are um besides being a mom to someone or besides being a dad to someone i thought i knew how to do that but i think i still struggled with it because for me like they were always my parents so it was hard for me to just like really completely view them as individuals but today it just got me thinking and i was like they didn't they didn't have to choose this life you know um i mean i guess like it was more normal back in their days uh to have kids when you get married like even marriage was like something you just do back in the day and um especially in asia whatever the reason is um they decided to have kids and i came along and my brother came along but the thing is they didn't have to give up that much of their lives for us. And I think I'm finally realizing that because for a while, like I was this petulant child who was just like, oh yeah, like you're a parent. So of course you have to do these things for me. Like you're my parents. And I don't know why I had that mentality. I think I developed that sense of like spoiltness and like entitlement when I started to live alone because I thought, you know, um, if you can't be like here physically and like, you know, give me the emotional support that I need, like on a daily basis by being like together in person, you can provide me, um, comfort in other ways and i think for me that meant it was okay for me to do whatever i wanted to do and have them like accept it because you weren't there when i needed you type of vibe you know even though like they they wanted to be there but they just couldn't because i was studying abroad so yeah i had that very like spoiled moment and i still have them sometimes and i'm, I'm so like i hate myself for it um, and I want to fix it because I mean like I'm gonna be 30 soon and I do not want to be a spoiled child when I'm fucking 30 Like I started to realize that just because they're parents It doesn't mean that they had to do all of that like they didn't have to um, Let me study abroad. I feel like they gave up a lot. They gave up like especially with my mom like she gave up literally her life to raise her kids she didn't have to do that. Like, she put us before her career. She put us before her life. And she didn't have to do that. Same with my dad, you know? He didn't have to work crazy hours so he could provide for all of us. You know, he didn't have to be frugal uh, with for himself so that he could spend on us. Like, he probably literally does not spend a lot for himself and he always provided us with more than what we needed and for a while i thought that was such an obvious thing like i i, I really took it for granted because i thought like yeah like other dads are probably doing this but like i have no proof like i don't even know if other dads are doing this it's just all like relative and i just really feel like in relevance to how much time he spends working and just sacrificing like everything for us it's just like yeah I, I should not have taken that for granted yeah so i feel like my dad was just like a freaking giving tree you know he just like gave and gave and gave and is still giving and the reason why i'm able to be unemployed right now and take this much time to work on something that i want to do like even having the luxury of being able to do that is thanks to my dad like and like i don't know why i thought it was okay for me to take that for granted and i'm like 20 what 25 and at this point in my life like i want to be able to like give my parents like allowances to to go somewhere for a trip i want to treat them with gifts and all these like things but 
I can't. And I realize that I'm being really selfish for taking this time to just do whatever I want to do and find a career that I can love because you know, it, my the career that I want doesn't necessarily like pay, at least at the moment it doesn't. I'm just doing this hoping that it'll become a career, but you know, it, it does have a chance of not becoming a career, but I'm still like risking all this time and money. I mean, like it might not seem like a huge risk that I'm taking, but it is true that I'm taking a risk right now. But what I'm trying to say is that I do think that there is somewhat of an entitlement to even think that like I deserve a certain type of lifestyle, I deserve a certain type of like whatever. Um, when my parents didn't even get to think of like what they truly deserve for themselves um like in their day and age like they didn't get to follow their dreams or like have that kind of luxury or that freedom to do what they loved or do what they truly wanted to do with their lives because they were like in survival mode and they needed to get a job at, so that they could support themselves and their families and I, I guess I just feel kind of guilty almost that like they had to give up on their dreams because they I'm sure they had dreams and they even told me <laughs> that wasn't just like becoming someone's father or someone's mother you know I, I feel almost guilty that they gave up on their dreams so I could like have my dream you know what I mean and I mean I'm not living my dream at the moment like I'm, I'm trying to but you get the point right like I wouldn't even had a chance to give this dream a try if my parents never made that sacrifice yeah like I just am super thankful for them I'm super lucky to be their child I am grateful for them I am gonna try not to act so entitled I'm not I'm gonna try not to be so fucking spoiled yeah so like I just wanted to share these like real realizations with you guys the more older you get i think you appreciate your parents more because you get how shitty being an adult is and you kind of like almost have this like empathy towards them because you're like damn but like you i bet i can't even like comprehend how hard it is to be someone's parent because i am not one and i also realized that this is like the closest form of like unconditional love and it's like the purest form of unconditional love that we receive from our parents and i really just wanted to take this time to like acknowledge it and appreciate it and if you guys are watching this vlog um, maybe this could be a good reminder for you guys to text or tell your parents that you love them as cheesy as it is I feel like um, it's necessary that we remind them we that we like love them <laughs> even though you guys might feel that barrier with your parents because of the whole different generation different culture da, 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 whatever the case might be i still fight with them plenty but you know it doesn't change the fact that i appreciate them love them i i hope this was like a good reminder for everyone <laughs> and a reminder for myself like i always say anyway um i think i'm done ranting now so yeah that's that's it so for today's breakfast i'm having this cinnamon apple oatmeal i think that's the name with some non-fat milk i need to obviously like do this why is there so much milk i swear i warmed it up but why is it so watery what the hell maybe i need to like wait till it gets like soaked up but yeah okay it does not look appetizing whatsoever but it does taste like fall so i'm gonna have this and maybe light my candles I feel like we're gonna see each other a lot in front of this mirror from now on <laughs> since I'm doing the outfits today I'm wearing this white hat because I have no makeup on and as you guys know my skin is shit so I gotta cover it up next I am wearing this hoodie from Urban and a matching set pants from Urban as well and then for my shoes I'm just gonna wear my Nike Air Force ones so we're currently at Amart and they have those little like stations where you can like use the hand sanitizer or that spray and then you can spray it on like these handles right here 
like, so. I know my hair is a bit, like, weird, but we are going to have Burger King. I love the fact that I'm always complaining about my skin and here I am eating fried food, junk food, whatever is bad for you. Burger King, we got fries. Nothing extraordinary, just regular fries. I wanted onion rings instead, but apparently you can't change the side to that. Holy shit, this is huge. But this is the Guinness Halloween Whopper. I'll show you guys what it looks like when I eat it. I'm really excited. Honestly, if they had the Impossible Burger here at the Korean Burger King, I would have had that because I guess like that could have been a healthier option, but they don't. So I'm gonna give this Halloween Whopper a try. This is gonna be insane, like insanely fattening. This is what the burger looks like. It's like black bun and then inside, oh my God. It's like lettuce, tomatoes, obviously, oh my God. Chicken patty and then underneath there's like the beef patty too. I'm honestly like obsessed with this set, like it's so comfortable and I feel like it kind of makes me look put together. And I want to buy some more like sets, but I don't know where to get them. Right now, I'm trying to like read this book, Power of Now. It's like, I, I mean, I barely like read it, but it's hard. I feel like the concept that he talks about is a thinker. Um, I read the sentence and then I kind of have to take a moment to actually like interpret what he's saying. So far, that's it. What I've learned so far is that if you are not able to turn off what your mind says, you don't really have any control over your mind. mind. And I think that makes sense. Uh, and the whole part of being able to like control your mind also includes like being able to shut it off when you can, like shutting off like those noises background noises in your head so hopefully this will give me some mental clarity afterwards i'm gonna read this book and maybe go out for like a walk but we'll see <laughs> my dog is here come here baby <laughs> she's like she's like a rat she's like a rat honestly i don't show you guys my dog very often it's because like i don't know we're like cool <laughs> We're cool, but I mean, I wasn't here when she was growing up. I was always abroad, like studying abroad, so she's more like my parents' dog. Um, but we, we, we cool. We cool. I still love her. Should show her more affection. But she's 13 years old. Actually, 14. She's smelly. <laughs> she's little. Man. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely let you guys know what I feel about this book after I finish it. I still realize that I haven't done like a detailed recap of the last book I read, which is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I think I will do my like more thorough reviews on these books when I have like five books down. This is my third one. Uh, the first one is The Four Agreements. So we have three to go, including this. So when I'm done reading all five books, I will do a book review. Hopefully you guys will find that interesting. think that by lighting up a candle I would be up to something more relaxing but nope I'm actually about to watch some more crazy ex-girlfriend um, I watched this before but I forget which season I stopped at so we are re-watching the show I'm literally watching like 10 different shows I feel Okay guys, so I recently got a new cup. <laughs> I want you guys to see what happens. When you pour cold water, this happens. It changes color. Like those little dots, they change color. Isn't that so cool? <laughs> Oh, 
holy shit, this is actually kind of cool. <laughs> I've never been to Soul Forest like during the nighttime, but apparently they got this like little section where it's like lit up in blue. And look, it kind of looks majestic. <laughs> no? Okay guys, I was a little bit frazzled because there were a lot of people like coming in and out of that coffee shop and I feel like I didn't do a good job of explaining how crazy that was, okay? So like, let me just reiterate. This is the coffee from Half. That's the name of the coffee shop. I saw so many group of people just walking around the streets with this cup and the cup, the shape of the cup, was literally the only evidence I had of this coffee place, okay? And I just saw this and I was like, oh my god, that coffee looks kind of good because it looks like more than just a regular latte. So I was like, where the fuck is this place? So I Instagrammed it and I just like try to find it and I found it. Uh, okay, I feel like I'm not doing a good job. I like looked up hashtag Sungsu cafes and it actually came up and yeah, like I ended up finding the place. It was literally two minutes away and from where I was and I found it. And this drink is called Buttercream Latte, I think. Yeah, so it was called Buttercream Latte. And this shit was literally like $8, no, $7. I mean, I think it's a little bit like expensive. I got to take some sips. It's actually fucking bomb. Like. I think this is my favorite cafe. It's actually so good, guys. Like, I, I, I don't think you guys understand like how proud I am of the fact that I found this coffee shop and the only evidence was like the shape of this cup. Unbelievable, in a good way. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my rant is over. <laughs> I'ma walk home now. <laughs> We found this at the convenience store. If you guys know like Korean chips, like this Gobok chip, their corn flavor, I think, or corn soup flavor is like their original one, I guess. But they came out with this new flavor called chocolate churros. And apparently like they were sold out when they first came out, but we got lucky and found these. It's like a smaller bag, but whatever, I don't really care. I'm excited to try these. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh. This is really good. Lots of layers. This actually lives up to the hype. I'm allergic to the bullshit.